Hi, this is Gary, and in this video we are going to solve the first challenge of the 2019 Flareon challenges. If you don't know Flareon, it's a reverse engineering CTF from FireEye that happens every year, and it's pretty cool. Uh, for more, go to flareon.com. All right, but let's start with the challenge. If we go in here, uh, there is a description, and you can learn quite a lot from the description itself. It mentions .NET, and we are looking for some kind of weapon codes, and it even recommends a tool called DNSpy. DNSpy is a great tool, and I did a couple of uh, videos with it in the past, which I linked into the description, so check it out if you are interested. We are going to use DNSpy in this one as well. First, let's look at the binary itself. If you download the challenge, you will only have this one. Um, all the rest is my solutions. So let's start it and see what happens. There is not very much to do here. There is an input field where you can type your weapon code and then fire, and it tells you that you have an invalid weapon code. All right, so let's go to DNSpy. If you don't know DNSpy, it's a .NET decompiler. So you can take a .NET binary and turn it back into a source code, either C Sharp or Visual Basic. We can start DNSpy and with that we start reversing. So the good thing with DNSpy is that you can see the source code and you can also make changes in the source code to manipulate the application. That's what we are going to exploit. All right, so let's go back to the Memecat battle station and I will throw it into DNSpy and it's going to decompile. So when we open it, there is a Mimcat battle station class or project, and we have a couple of forms here, and you can see it seems there is stage one and stage two as well, and of course there is victory. So apparently we are going to have two stages for weapon codes, so we're going to need to figure out both. If you go into stage one, and this is very simple, there is this function called fire button click. So obviously, you don't need to look too much in the source code to figure out that this is the function that's going to be called when we click the button fire. And then there must be some kind of code here that evaluates whether the weapon code is correct. That's what we are looking for. And this is what we can see here. Again, this is the first challenge, so it's going to be fairly easy. It says, if code text box text equals to rainbow, then all kinds of things just happen. The good sign is that where success happens, it says victory animation timer dot start. So something is going to happen with victory and that's good for us. So let's try it. Actually, I would start the application from the end by, you know, just to show you how it works. All right, back here. The weapon code should be rainbow, so I type in rainbow and then click fire. And something is happening, that's good. So we kill the cat with lots of happiness, and now we are at stage two, that's great. And for that we need another weapon code, so we will have to figure it out. So I will stop the application now. We can go back to stage two in the source code. There is a fire button click there again. And as you can see, it looks very similar to the previous one, but it says there is a function called is valid weapon code, and it gets the weapon code we typed in as an argument. So we need to check that out. All right, let's see what's happening here. It takes the string, which was our weapon code, and it makes a character array out of it. And it reads through all characters, and it seems like it XORs it with the character A. And at the end, it checks whether the resulting character sequence equals to this one. This is a kind of obfuscation, because it doesn't actually disclose the weapon code as the other function before, but it discloses the result of an XOR function. The good thing with XOR, however, is that if you say code XOR key equals cipher, then to get back to code or the key, you can do cipher XOR key equals code. And the code is our weapon code. But the good thing for us is that in this situation, we know the cipher, which is this array. And we also know the key, which is the character A. So we just take the resulting array and XOR each element with A, and that should give us the original weapon code. 
So that's what we are going to do to reveal the web encodes. However, before we do that, there are a couple of things I tried before getting to this solution. And one of them was basically to make this function return true. That works very often with .NET. However, in this case, there is a protection built into this program. If we go back to main, uh, which is here under program main, then this is where the program is initialized. And as you can see, where the application starts, it creates an so-called arsenal, which equals with these two weapon codes. And that's going to be checked at the end. So when I return true from the function, uh, although it should have worked, because it was compared to this arsenal, it didn't actually work at the end. So I could get out a string, but it wasn't really the weapon code I was looking for. The solution I used instead is to make the application print the second code for me. We go back to the place where the stage two form is initialized. We go to the constructor, which calls the initialize component. Here's the initialize component function. And here you can see that this is where the whole user interface is set up. So what I'm going to do is you see the code text box here and we will actually make the application write the weapon code into the code text box for us when it loads. For that, I will just go to the bottom somewhere here and then I will basically reverse whatever the function does to get back the weapon code from the uh, character sequence and write it into the text box. So back to the initialize component and I will right click here and say edit method in C sharp. This is where we can edit the code and we will just magically make the code appear here. Yes. So this was my solution. I take the same character array that we've seen in the fire function and I will iterate through it, XOR each character with the letter A. By that, I basically reversing the validation function and then I write the resulting array into the code text box. Once we are finished, uh, we click compile and then click save all. And we can just create a new instance. I will call it number four. Yes. We have a new binary called memecat battle station four. Double click and the first weapon code was rainbow. Then fire. All right, it's still working. And the second weapon code, as you can see, is already filled out. That's what, what our little modification did. It decoded the weapon code and brought it back into the input field. So we can just click fire. And it worked. And the victory screen holds our flag. Yes. All right, that's all to it. So just to recap, we decompile the application with the DNSPY then looked into the code. First, we found the first weapon code at the fire button click function. Uh, then we proceeded to the second stage. We realized that in the second stage, there is a little obfuscation implemented and uh, we modified the initialization function to reverse the obfuscation and write the weapon code into the input field right away. And we got the flag. All right, so this was the first challenge of the 2019 Flareon challenges. I think it was pretty fun. It's, uh, it was still fairly simple, but the other challenges are coming and they are not going to be all that simple. So see you at the next one. Bye.